his thoughts become things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I'm glad you guys decided to join with me today. Maybe grab that uh, great cup of coffee or maybe your bottled water, sweet tea, and sitting maybe on your couch or your desk at work with your headphones on. Don't get in trouble. And uh, I'm just glad you guys decided to join with me today on this uh, amazing day we're having that God's created. And today I want to talk to you guys about something that I believe is really powerful. But before I talk to you today about politics, yes. Yes, I said politics. I want to be able to express to you guys, first and foremost, my appreciation to all of you guys uh, who's actually been a part of our Hot Off the Press monthly book club. Uh, we're getting so many people joining the club every day uh, to get the, the books that I write every month. And this month, our featured book that I just released the other day is called Beliefs, Make You or Break You. And I've got a workbook with it to challenge your thinking on your beliefs and to really go deep in the subconscious to to really understand why you formulated this belief system that you have now. So I want to encourage all of you to go to the website identitynetwork.net and, and uh, put on the word beliefs in our search engine and order the beliefs combo. It's going to give you the book and the workbook. And as always, as, as I'm in the office, I'll be more than happy to autograph the book for you before my staff ships it on its way to your house. So today I want to talk to you guys about politics because of the fact I believe that sometimes it's hard for people to really understand exactly what to do with politics. Now, many of you, as, as you know, probably live in the United States of America, like myself, and you find yourself caught in, the, in limbo. You find yourself caught up in the system of this world when it deals with conservative and liberals and, and Republican and Democrat. And what do we do, Jeremy? You know, one side is pulling and the other side's pulling. I want to talk to you guys today about what to do with politics because I'm a firm believer. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier, great, great dynamic, uh, former pastor friend of mine who is just an amazing life coach. Uh, here in Huntsville, Alabama, we're talking on the phone earlier, and we got to talking about um, kingdom and talking about politics and how basically this world system tends to suck you up in it. And it keeps you there, and it forces you to choose a side. It forces you to use your voice, to make a decision. Are you hot or cold, black and white? Are you for us or are you against us? You know, we deal with black lives matter, all lives matter. You know, then we get people on both sides where, you know, don't just be racist and say black. We should say all, and don't just say all. The focus should be on black. Well, I mean, the system is just sucking us up left and right. And unfortunately, I see a lot of my friends on Facebook, Facebook and social media that are being that are ministers of the gospel and they're being sucked up in it to where you no longer hear the message of Christ. You never longer hear the message of the kingdom. Now it's nothing about politics and why Trump is in office and God put him here and, and we gotta do something about Biden and we got, you know and, and, and goes on and on and on. And the truth is it's never gonna stop people. No matter who's in office, if you get the most godliest of the godly in office, it doesn't matter. It's never going to stop. And and I think when we live in a nation where there's in the free world, where we have the right to vote, the right to choose, the right to do this and the right to do that, we thank God for our liberties and freedoms, do we not? But unfortunately, those liberties and freedoms come with a cost. And the cost is... Our identity. The cost is giving up our own power to really operate in a kingdom mentality to decrease that God, not politics, but God can increase in us. And we live in a system, a world now, where you're being forced. And I hear both sides of the, of the spectrum, both sides of parties, both sides of humanity 
that turn around and say, we have to get involved or, you know, the old saying is true, you know, we'll go to hell in a handbasket. You know, our nation will suffer and we'll go, you know, and, and we'll be disappointed to God. And then you hear the other side that says, you know what, I'm not concerned whatsoever in being involved in it because of this or because of that. And here's what I want to recommend to you guys, okay? I'm going to give you just maybe a scripture or two and I want to talk to you guys just for a moment about this, okay? Now, the scripture, and I pull from the Old Testament, that says God raises up kings, God exalts them, and God brings them down. Now, does that mean that we don't have a right that we shouldn't speak out and speak up, you know, against abortion, against, you know, this lifestyle, against drugs, against, you know, who's fighting to take the, you know, the control of our presidency, and, and what about socialism, and what about democracy, and what about this, and what about that? You know, we don't want to get into socialism. We don't want to get into this, and so we've got to fight, fight, fight. Let me explain something to you. First and foremost, do I believe that sometimes we need to voice our opinions? Absolutely we do. We live in a society where you're free to choose uh, the power to say what you want to. You can bash the president. You can bash actors and actresses. You can get on Saturday, Saturday Night Live, which I happen to like Saturday Night Live. You, know, you can get on Saturday Night Live and you can make fun of politicians. You can make fun of religious people you know, in a healthy way, of course. You know, uh, the traditional, you know, the church lady mentality they had years ago that was hilariously fun. Money. And we can see a little bit of the traits of some of the truth in that come out. The rest of it was just comedy. And we can see where we can voice our opinions. And society and humanity has always done that. Correct? And here's one thing I want to recommend to you. Is it healthy for us to voice our opinion? Sure it is. Sure it is. It's no, no problem with that. But I want to be able to take a different approach for you guys today. I want to say, what if we understand that within the world system, there are a systematic way that goes beyond the old the old idea you know uh, idea of the devil's system the devil is controlling the system well he, here's what i want to bring to you okay and realize this what if the system of the world actually is political and social and media and a world full of people's opinions and ideas anyway i mean isn't a system of the world based on people's ideas and opinions that begin to manifest? Isn't that thoughts become things and law of attraction? Isn't the world system based on ideas and, uh, and affairs of people that tend to vocalize it and bring it out to be able to make laws and set up this and set up that? You know, isn't really the world system based on nothing but human thinking anyway? Isn't the world system based on opinions of people and, and fighting and people fighting with each other and fighting with governments and fighting with presidents and fighting with other countries? Isn't that the world system anyway? We're so quick to be able to say the the system of this world is ran by the devil. And I'm going to say something that might shock some of you. I don't believe that. I think it's hogwash if you want to know the truth about it. I believe the world system is based on the scriptures that says, Come out from among, among them and be separate, says the Lord. Them has nothing to do with the devil at all. Them has something to do with a, a thinking that is projected from the human mind of opinions and ideas and whose side are you on and you should vocalize this and you you better speak out against this and you've got to you know justice 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 so use your voice here's the idea that i want to bring present to you unless someone is being killed or murdered unless someone is being harmed raped mugged something against their their own will okay those are the issues i would say speak out speak up and speak loud Stand up for humanity, absolutely. Stand up for those who don't have a voice. Stand up for those who maybe are the weaker ones. Stand up for those who are fleeing to other countries because they're looking for refuge because maybe of the hell they're, they're in within their own country. Speak out for those people. But when it deals with issues such as God is a Republican, I don't mean this bad, folks, disrespectful. That is the most foolish thing I've ever I've heard. And, and, and if you think God is pleased with that mentality, I would say you're wrong. God winks at pure ignorance and stupidity. God is not Republican. God is not Democrat. God doesn't choose a side. And God is not liberal. And God is not conservative. And when we tack these, these horrific 
earthly terms and definitions to the supremacy of God, God of the universe, who is proven to be our Father, proven to be the mother to the motherless, proven to be energy that flows in all creation, proven to be a light that you know set upon a hill that can't be shaken, proven to be El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Hello. There's your feminine side of God, just in case for those religious folk. There's your sacred cow we just knocked over. You know, for those who would come against a supremacy of God Almighty, El Shaddai, Jehovah God, and begin to put God into a box that places God, this, this thing that we really can't even figure out because He's so holy and so righteous and so just, uh, when we begin to put a tag or a label upon that thing we call God, it's almost a borderline blasphemy to put God in that type of situation. God put Trump in office of the United States. God put Obama in... Here, here's, my, here's my thinking. I want to sort of say this to you guys, okay? Since God said in His Word that He's the one that pulls them down and exalts them and brings them up and everything else, then it was God Almighty who put Obama in office. It was God with joy who put Obama in office, for all those religious folks going crazy now. And it was God, obviously, who put Trump in office for a reason as well. So here's my point that I want to bring to you guys. What if we quit allowing the media and quit allowing these, these parties to suck us up into it? And, and here's what's interesting to me about society as a whole, of really how we are used as puppets and really used as, as ignorant people. Okay, And I say that with respect, Okay, but we are really the most ignorant people that we know. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. The reason why I say well, all of us are ignorant, I know many of you are like, you're like me in the law of attraction in your world, you're like, I rebuke that, I'm not ignorant. But go with me for a moment. The reason why I say we're all ignorant, every one of us listening to the sound of my voice are all ignorant, because of the fact that we're allowed to allow a TV show, a commercial, um, a, a, you know, a political view, a party, a person in, in, in political affairs to, to play with our emotions, to pull on us as if, as if you have the right to force me to be on your side or your team and try to bring convincing ways to me is very disrespectful to me as a human being, to be honest with you. It's very disrespectful. And now we've seen the past, let's say, for example, the past maybe 15 years, like before 15 or 20 years ago, we didn't have what we have today in politics. I mean, back in the day, we had Ronald Reagan. Yeah, he said he was a Christian, but he didn't really, he wasn't, in for, he wasn't forceful with it. I mean, for goodness sake, folks, his wife actually called, you know, Nancy Reagan pulled upon astrologers in the White House and psychics in the White House. And some of you would go crazy about that, you know, today. But back in the day, it was like, eh, okay, whatever. You know, he's the president. She's the president's wife. I run my life. I, I'm a Christian or I'm a this, I'm a that, you know, and I'm here to work on my own salvation friend trembling and affect my my sphere of influence, my neighborhood. I'm here to affect my world and while while he runs the the, the, the country. And back in the day, there was so much more an, of, of embracing political parties and both parties tend to work side by side with each other. And now we've gotten so polar polarized that it's so hard that we allow people, hear me out folks, we allow people now to get on television who's running for president to say, I'm a Christian, I'm going to change this nation to be Christian country. Do you not think for a moment, folks, they take you for a fool? Because they do, unfortunately. Sad, but it's true. Do you not think for a moment that people are not playing, playing you like a puppet? And they're not playing you to show you that they know how to pull upon Christian people? Because obviously Christian people, don't get this wrong way, folks, are dumb enough to fall for it. When we're supposed to be ten times wiser, hear me out when I say this scripture, than the children of this world the children of a system. So what do we do? We fall for it. We play into their hands. Well, they're a Christian. We got to stand because they say, you know, our country's going to die. We got to stand with them. Do you not think for a moment they're playing you? Because they are. And I don't care what a person in politics says. It doesn't mean they're not genuinely a Christian. It doesn't mean that we're judging them. It means that they know how to pull upon you. 
and they know exactly what to say. And I'm going to say something you guys need to need to really come out from among them for a moment, okay? Because if this triggers an emotion in you, when I say the word, I'm not a big fan of Trump, if it triggers you, something's wrong with your spirit. If it triggers you to say, I'm not a big fan of Obama, something it triggers you, that something triggers you, something's wrong with you. If it triggers you when I say, I'm not a big fan of Bush, or I'm not a big fan of Reagan, or I'm not a big fan of Melania Trump, or Michelle Obama, if, some, if any of those names I've mentioned trigger something in you, then there's something severely wrong, not with you, but with your spirit. Why? Because no one, if I was to say to you right now, for example, if I was to say, hey, guess what? I, I like Angelina Jolie, or I'm not a big fan of Angelina Jolie, or you know what? I don't like Jennifer Aniston. Or maybe if I was to say, which I do, I'm just making up stuff for you guys, or if I was to say, I'm not a big fan of Brad Pitt, or hey, Matthew McConaughey, he's a bad actor, or she, or you know, or I think this actor is not the best in the world. I'm not a big fan of them. I know every one of you. I know every one of you would probably say, eh, okay, well, whatever. It's Hollywood. No big deal to me. Why? Because you do not subject yourself to allow them to mold you as a puppet because you're not yielding your energy, your emotion, your attachment to any of them. And so it's like water off a duck's back. It doesn't affect you, does it? If I was to say to you, I'm not a big fan maybe of Elvis Presley, you'd be like, oh, okay, okay, that's cool, no big deal, whatever, and you move on. But if I say, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, oh my God in heaven, what, you just blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's what many of you would probably think. And that's unfortunate because of the fact none of us are allowed to be outside of the system and get into kingdom thinking and theology to really understand that if something triggers you, you're giving too much power to it. You're giving too much energy to it. Now, do I like Donald Trump? Do I like Obama and Bush? I love, I love them all. And to be honest with you, I do not favor Trump over Obama, nor do I favor Bush over, over Trump or Bush over Obama. I don't really care. And you know why? Because I'm not from this world, the Bible says. Therefore, I don't yield my energy or my view or my um, power to some political party that, that what's funny about it is it's going to change in four years anyway. And for those of you who, let's say, for example, are huge Trump supporters, the, he sent by God to correct this. Well, I have news for you. You're going to lose a lot of friends who don't like Trump over something that will be out of office in four years or eight years. Now, where's it going to leave your friendships, your relationships? Covenant relationships, folks, are far more important than someone's opinions of an, of an office or a presidency or a political party or a government thing or, or what this, what you like about this or this, it, because that's going to fade away. Why? Because it's part of the world's system. And every one of them plays you. Do I think Democrats go overboard? Absolutely. Do I think the Republicans lie and go overboard? Absolutely they do. And guess what, folks? It's equal. When I hear dynamic, powerful, spiritual people say, don't watch CNN, that's fake news. Trump said it. I want somebody to say, wow, do you know how embarrassing you sound right now to the kingdom of God? You're an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. And yes, I just said that. You are an embarrassment because you're not acting as an ambassador of a kingdom that's not of this planet. So yeah, it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment when we bring any political party and any political view into light where we're giving an empowerment to it. I think the Bible, if I'm not mistaken, said, I, you shall have no other gods before me. I think that's what the Bible says, if I'm not mistaken. And I think those idols have nothing to do with a little Buddha statue sitting in your home as a decor <laughs> that you don't worship. And I think it goes beyond something that deals with, I can't even listen to this type of song as a pop song because Ariana Grande or Mariah Carey, their song's going to send me to hell. And I, and I don't want to idolize music. Well, I have news for you. You're idolizing presidents. You're idolizing political parties. And that, my friend, is more important than a pop song that's going to fade in and out, <laughs> to be honest with you. Because you have to begin to understand that these are things, folks, that they have um, entertained you with to get your attention. 
And so now we don't have a political system of both parties that just now just say, hey, you know what? Vote for me. And, and I want you guys to hear me for one. Hear me out for a moment. We don't have a political system that says any longer, hey, vote for more, me because, you know what? Here's what I'd like to do for the country. I want to be able to help economy by ABC. I'd like to be able to bring more maybe more free people more time by maybe uh, uh, ushering in a law that maybe we can do 35 hours a week versus 40 hours a week whatever the case may be no now what we have now what we have is we have arguments and fightings and screams and here's here's what it here's what gets me so and I'm going to call out some names just to just be honest with you and so if they ever hear this this podcast hey you know what if the shoe fits wear it amen and that is this you know in Alabama we have Tommy Tupperfield Tupperfield who was a a former coach and he's like all about Christian man I'm all about Christian and we have Jeff Sessions who's all about supposedly being Christian too and so they're battling it out now here's what's funny to me okay as a Christian they're battling it out and it's Christian values Christian values stand with Trump got Trump support and Trump's endorsement and we turn around and because they're actually fighting against um uh, Doug Jones, who is a Democrat and, and who's been our, you know, you know, for this position in Alabama for a number of years, and so they're fighting for his position. So here's what's ironic to me, okay? So people like Tommy Tupper, Tupperfield or Jeff Sessions or Trump, hello, or anybody, or Obama, or anybody. Where we push the I am a born again Christian, and yet the first thing out of their mouth when it deals with their time to go on the road. To sort of, you know, push their their votes, you know, to push themselves to get more votes, is attacking the other party, and not even just attacking the other party on what they believe, but then it's gotten to a place where they're liars, they're cheaters, they're moochers, they cheated on their wife, their son is this, their wife is this. Do you know he's been married twice? And so what do we do? We go for the juggler vein. Think about that. And here we are hearing people who are supposedly confessing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And yet they attack the other person and their family. And even attack you know, their, their personality. They attack their identity. They attack everything about them. So, and yet, guess what we do? We turn around and we say, oh, they're Christian. We can sort of overlook all of that. So you're telling me you can overlook someone, an innocent person, or a person in general, we'll say it that way, literally being attacked, where their reputation's attacked, their family's attacked, and yet their life is attacked. As opposed to a true man of God, or true woman of God, for that matter, we don't want to leave women out, who would say, you know what? I believe in my value in the sense of I know that I'm educated enough for this position. And so I want to be able to tell you about me and what I can do for my country. What I can do for my nation. What I can do for my state. And how I want to be able to help my state. And help bring economy back. And maybe help, help a little bit of health care. I've got a great idea for health care. But no. You know why? Here, let me explain something to all you guys out there. And this is where you're blinded and I'm blinded. Okay? So I'm in the same boat here. Speaking of the choir here. Is you, as a kingdom person, you can no longer avoid people that claim to be Christians attack other people in political systems. You can't afford and overlook people who can actually say, I'm a Christian, but yet have been known to manipulate people, married dozens of times, cheated on their wives, and done all this stuff, and, and bury your head in the sand and say, but they claim to be Christian people. Do we pull people's past up in their face? No. But here's what we do. We come out from among all that craziness in the system. So they've been married two times, three times, four times, or one time. That should never reflect on their office. Hear me out for a moment, folks, because obviously it doesn't, because guess what? People voted for Trump. Hello. When Obama was faithful to his one wife, never cheat on her. So it does, it tends to, in Christianity, it tends to no longer matter about morality. Now it just matters is you just say you're Christian and you just wanna you just wanna just really just be a bully and just bully people. And that's what it's boiled down to now. Am I talking about Trump or attacking him? No. I'm talking about people in general in politics. I'm talking about Obama and Bush and Reagan and all of the above folks. Please hear me out by Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. I'm talking about all of them. 
We've got to come to a place where we say to ourselves, you know what? I claim Christ as my Savior. And what that means for me is this. Now, once again, if you're not a Christian, hey, you know what? That's your business. No problem. No problem at all. I'm not that person. I don't, I don't judge. I don't care. I really don't. I just work out my own salvation, friend, trembling. I live my life. That's all I'm, count- I'm accountable to do. Amen? So what I'm saying by that is this. Is if you're going to claim a religion, if you're going to claim a morality, if you're going to claim a uh, position in a religion such as Christianity that says decrease that God can increase in you. And you claim a religion such as Christianity that sits here and, and lets you know, not my will, but thy will be done. And Jesus saying, the words I speak are spirit and life. And guess what? You know what? You need to do the same thing. Then here's what we've got to do. We've got to Go back and remember what we believe and remember exactly who I stand for. And if I decrease, that He increases in me. If I die to myself and take up His cross and follow Him daily, then I kind of die to myself. And that means my opinions of this world really doesn't even matter because I'm not from here anyway, so it doesn't matter. We've got to come to a place, folks, where, you know what? We've got to quit saying that we put our faith in a political party. And, and and let me also explain this to you guys. I love my country. I love America. Love it. Thank God I'm born here. But is America God's favorite? Absolutely not. Does God look at America and say, that's my people and everybody else is just horrible? Absolutely not. I don't believe in a, in, in, in a pride thing that America has. I don't believe in pride within America. I don't. I believe in... A nation that's not from here, that has incorporated it with itself within a people on earth that is crying out, bring thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's my cry. Not my cry is not, I'm going to be Republican because they're Christian people. That's very evil and wrong to say. Very, very, very wrong to say. I'm going to be Democrat because they're Christian people. Very wrong to say. Very wrong to say when we call out these things. Folks, let me tell you something. We've got to come to a place where we just pray for those in office. If it's a Democrat or a Republican, who cares? Just pray for them. Pray that the Holy Spirit leads. When you try to be the Holy Spirit, I believe that to me is part of almost probably just blasting the Holy Spirit if you know the truth about it. Because it's not, what you're saying is, you know what, Holy Spirit, you're not doing a good enough job. Get out of the way. Let me do it. That's pretty much what you're saying. When you feel you've got to call out everyone else's sins, when you feel like you've got to begin to change everything because obviously they're not doing it right. Here's the idea we have to understand. Pray for people. Pray for your enemies, the Bible says. Pray for your, and pray for your neighbors. Pray for those you hate. Pray for those you love. You shouldn't hate anybody, but hey, let's just go there for a moment. You know, Pray for Democrats' presidents. Pray for Republican presidents. Just pray for them. But don't get in your mind that, that one is better than the other because the truth is, folks, they're not. There's a lot of great things for Republicans and there's a lot of pharmaceutical things within Republicans. There's a lot of great things in Democrats, but there's also a lot of extremities of liberalism and, and Democrats. I am not the person who looks at one or the other and says, Democrats are trying to control the country as socialism and they're going to take God away. Very, 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 very idiotic to think that way. Very idiotic. I'm sorry, but it is. Very idiotic to sit here and say, all Republicans are Pharisees and Republicans are trying to control and make everyone believe like they very chaotic for me to say. We have to remember, folks, these extreme, extreme views were birthed in us by the system. Trust me, you didn't come up with this on your own, folks. This was birthed in you by a system. And if you think the system will not will refuse to leave you alone, you're sadly mistaken. It will not. And every day of your life, you will fight and struggle with a system of two parties. That God really doesn't give two hoots about. I mean, honestly, God does not care about these two parties whatsoever. What God cares about is a people that is embedded within within a world, within a, within the earth, to say, just choose me and just live it out loud. And, and don't voice and don't try to force anyone. Just live it out loud. Be the light so people can see that light. Help people. Feed the widows. Help people walk across the street when they need it. Help the, help the disabled. Hey, how, you know, go to those who are depressed. Walk the extra mile with people. Go visit the people in jail because they really need your love right now. Hey, there's people down here that, that need food. Don't pray that God brings them food. Just give them some food. 
Give them a hug. Tell them to love them. You know? That's what the world needs, folks. People are crying out for love. People are not crying out for, uh, you know, a Democratic president or a Republican president. People are crying out for other people that will be in the that are made in the image and likeness of God that will just be there for them. And that's the main theme of God. You know, if you look at if you look at Christ, and I'm going to say this: Christ never said anything political. Zilch. Besides, hey, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That's it. Now move on back to the, to the kingdom. That's pretty much Jesus' standpoint on that. He didn't care. He didn't care whatsoever. His viewpoint was, go the extra mile. Feed the poor. Go visit those you know, uh, uh, in prison. Take care of the widows. Take care. There's always going to be poor monkeys. So take care of them. I mean, these ideas are what Jesus came because all these things is kingdom. Kingdom is not parties. Kingdom is not, i got to choose a side to stand with them so the other party won't take our country down to hell with them. No, no, that's not biblical. No words in the Bible. No word at all. Not New Testament, not Old Testament. What is biblical is denying your crazy opinions that the media is trying to embed in you and, and truthfully, they're all Lies. Both sides, unfortunately, both sides are liars. All media lies to you. I'm sorry, there's not a. If you're looking for a godly president, if you're looking for a godly government, if you're looking for a godly political party, if you're looking for a godly media, I'm going to tell you right now, all of those I just mentioned are part of this world system that has been placed in order by man. So all they, all they can produce is nothing but extremities and lies. All of them, folks. All of them. And because of that, we have to see the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is not anything in that deals with groups. What matters is individual lives and hearts that truly matter. And that's what we're here for, is to change the heart's and the, and the minds of people to let them know, hey, God loves you. You're important. And I'm going to show you that imagery of God because I'm in the image and likeness of God. That's what you get involved with. we got to get involved, involved in the political system. No, you don't. No, you don't. Never. Not biblical. Not biblical at all. What you need involved with is people's lives and loving them. That's what I want, I want you to get involved with. So I wanted to sort of bring food for thought for you guys today because I believe we all truly need a change. We need a paradigm shift. We need to refocus folks and realize that the system and the media, their job, now hear me out, and, and, and think about it, the algorithms on Facebook, the moment you like something Republican, bam, all of a sudden, it's like magic. All of a sudden, the system changes and they, it just sends you nothing but news feeds after news feeds after news feeds to Republican or Democrat. Or, or if you like something about Black Lives Matter, all of a sudden, bam, Algorithms shift and change for everything to be about black lives or all lives or straight lives or gay lives or police or, or, or nuns or armies. I mean, whatever it is you like, you're going to get more of that. That's just how life is, folks, on, on social media. So please, hear me from the bottom of my heart. The world and the media and social media, it's all... Just nothing but extremities. And it's all trying to suck your, the life out of you. To pull you into it. Choose a side. Vote. We need you. They need you. They're going to die without you. She's going to not. He'll be president and take the world down if, if you don't get in there and do something. Am I saying not to vote? No. Vote. You should. Vote. You're right. Do it. What I'm saying though is don't get wrapped up in life. Don't get wrapped up in this. The moment you do... I'm, I'm going to say something to you guys real quick and I'll end with this. The moment you you open your mouth to voice an opinion because of something you read on Fox or CNN or he said this or she said this or Trump's kind of trying to kill these people or, or Biden you know, is undercover for Satan or whatever the case may be. The moment you your mind formulates an opinion at that moment... I want you to stop right that moment and say, wait a minute, hold on. You know what? I'm not your puppet. I am not, I'm not this country's puppet. I'm not the media's puppet, and I'm not a Republican puppet, and I'm not going to be a Democrat puppet. I am not a puppet to you. You don't need me. You don't need my opinion, and you do not need me to choose a side. So I stay away from all of it. And the moment you do that, your freedom and your peace and your sanity is there. 
your peace will be sustained. The moment you give an opinion, because the puppet in you is, is, is wooed by that, your identity and your peace starts becoming fragmented the very moment you do. Peace comes from knowing your wholeness is not in anything or anyone else's opinions or their viewpoints or them trying to suck the life out of you. Your peace and your sanity and your identity is wrapped up in you knowing yourself and God and, and sustaining that at that moment of your life. So I want to encourage all of you, come out from among them, all of them, and be separate, says the Lord. And start attracting into your life peace. Start attracting joy. Start attracting, um, you know, um, more money. Start attracting, you know, more friends. Start attracting things of the kingdom. It's where you can be a blessing to society and to humanity. Because when you get to heaven one day, here's the key. Whatever this thing is we call heaven, you know, the moment you get in the afterlife, we'll say it that way, no matter what, who you are that's listening to me or what you believe, the moment you do, do you really think God's going to say, thank God, hallelujah, you Republican. Oh, I don't know what I was going to do about you. Thank God you voted for Trump. Oh, thank God you voted for Hillary. Can you imagine? Think about that for a moment. Do you think God's going to look at you and say, you know what, all this stuff you did, son and daughter, all this stuff, it was just in vain. None of it matters. It came, it went, it left. None of it matters. What mattered is your heart and how you treat and love and do for other people. No matter who they are, what they are, or what they believed, you maintained with a renewed mind that kept kingdom consciousness alive within you. And that my friend, is when God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's what I want for each one of you today, okay? That's my, that's my, my cry for each one of you, okay? So I wanted to bless you guys with this today because I believe it's been in my heart for a long time and I know sometimes people can get very um, fighting mentality and, you know, and just get aggressive. And I know some of you, man, your triggers are probably going off like crazy during this podcast. The moment I, I mentioned someone's name and all of a sudden I know you, I know most of you, and you formulate this idea, oh my gosh, I don't think he voted for him. I don't think he voted for her. But I like to be able to to catch every one of you off guard to say, eh, you know what, all, all of you are wrong. It's just I wanted to throw a, uh, uh, you know, throw this 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 ball to you and see what you'll catch and how you'll catch it. To say, oh, that bothered me. Oh, you know what, he didn't. Oh, she did. Because the moment you felt that, you're the victim. You're the one the system has sucked in, and you no longer control yourself. So I wanted you to think about that today, all right? I love every one of you. I think every one of you are fantastic. You're amazing. You're all co-creators in Christ. You're all co- you know, with God and you vibrate and you and you and you have these frequencies about you that just exuberate love and I just wanted to add more flavor to that love and that grace and that compassion to you today to say don't let anybody change your vibe. All right? Don't let political systems change your vibe. Keep your vibration pure, focused on kingdom, um, peace, joy, love, mercy, compassion. Go next to mile. That's who you are. And don't let anyone take that away from you today. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. You guys are amazing. You really are. Don't forget, as always, tune in Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. On our on Facebook, I did a network page. I'm going live every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central. I want to see you there with me live. And also, do not forget, as we say always in this podcast, today is a day that you can create. Your co-creators with God create a day and make it happen for you today. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.